Welcome to The Buck Stops Here, the official podcast of NottonHallofFame.com, and I'm your host, The Buck, Kirk Buckner, owner, operator of NottonHallofFame.com, and its sister sites, the Fictitious Athlete Hall of Fame and the Fictitious Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, which will be announcing the semifinalists very, very soon. Look for that in upcoming days, and, but today we're talking, we're going to look back a couple weeks to the Hockey Hall of Fame. They just announced their class for 2019. And Evan Nolan, who's been with us before, is going to join me shortly. And we're going to look at probably the worst Hockey Hall of Fame class ever. It's a bizarre one. It's got one certified female star, two B-level stars, and your usual usual, uh, group of people who are your builders, coaches... They're pretty good, but let's be honest, they're not the stars. That's not what sort of stirs the drink when it comes to the Hockey Hall of Fame, or really any Hall of Fame for that matter. So Evan's going to join us, and let's take a look at what is just utter bafflement. All right. Evan, good to talk to you, man. Like, it's been uh, way too long. Last time I talked to you, I was still living in Canada. Yeah, and... uh... And your leaving apparently brought good luck to the country. I mean, you now have more NBA titles in the last 25 years than uh, than World Series and uh, and uh, Stanley Cups combined. But uh, congratulations to your Raptors. Thank you. you even from afar. And uh, yeah, good good on you getting the islands. It's it's probably a little bit warmer or nicer there than it was up in. Uh, the uh, the Great White North. It, it definitely was, yeah, especially uh, where I was in the Rockies. Uh, granted, there's a lot of things I miss there. It's kind of weird that I can go from the West Coast to the East Coast uh, in 30 minutes. I'm not <laughs> used to that as a Canadian, that's for damn sure. But it is pretty cool that one day I can sort of enjoy the sunrise and the other day, uh, the next day, the sunset. But uh, the sunset, sun, I think wow. the sunset really on the... On the Hockey Hall of Fame class of 2019, what the fuck was that? Uh, I know you have a theory, but before you get, we get into your theory, uh, it was questionable as to what happened there. I I don't have a good I don't have a good explanation for any of it. Um, yeah, <laughs> do you want to go with your theory? Well, yeah, yeah. I, th- I think I will just sort of touch on uh, the definite headliner and the only person uh, who definitely should have been inducted in her in her first uh, year of el- eligibility. That being Haley Wickenheiser, who is, I think, in the opinion of really almost everyone, the greatest hockey player of the female gender that ever lived. Uh, that mantle will probably not be taken from her anytime soon. I think she's got more points in international hockey than anyone else. Four-time gold medalist, a silver medalist. Uh, I'm not sure if you know this. She was also a member of the Canadian softball team in the Olympics, too. Oh, wow. That I did not know. Yes. I mean, like a a true athlete, uh, a real major star in women's hockey and she definitely deserves to be there and if I'm sounds like I'm hammering this point a lot it's because of my conspiracy theory that makes it not really popular to say in this sort of uh gender equity sort of uh world that we now live in which we all we should have but I th- maybe the whole PC thing I think I'm trying to over explain myself a little bit yeah well I mean you're, you're, what you're saying is a PC thing in that they, she was such a great, but I mean, not to, to use the cliche here, that she was essentially the Gretzky of women's hockey, that because of that, they wanted to make sure she's shown so brightly in this class to give her her due that they ended up with, let's just call it a substandard class for everybody it, else. It, it, exactly. Right? And that's and that's sort of the conspiracy I put out on Twitter uh, where I pretty much said, uh, like, there were other candidates, not necessarily... And none of them who should have been first or who would have been nece- who been locked as first ballot because they weren't uh, as Wickenheiser. And any one of them you could have put in. But I maintain that you've got a B team. It's really Haley and a B team so that you've got no choice but to have Haley Wickenheiser as your headliner, which will be the first time, to my knowledge, unless I'm mistaken, that in any major sports Hall of Fame in North America that you've got a woman headliner. Yeah, I mean, outside outside of probably like uh, tennis or golf or something, I would say probably that that's got to be the case. 
Right, and I'm not counting. Like and I don't count tennis or golf. In the four major sports. Yeah, and I don't count tennis, tennis or golf as major halls of fame, frankly, because uh, th- their bar yeah. to get in is a little bit too low. No disrespect. That's not a, a shot at the sport. It's a shot at the institutions. Right. No, I agree. And it's, it's golf, particularly. I think you just like you hit a points threshold. You're automatically in. I remember that happened once. VG, VJ Singh when he mm. got in the golf hall of fame. I found out about it on like ESPN. They're like. If Vijay Singh finishes fourth or higher in this tournament, he qualifies for the Hall of Fame. And I was like, wait, what? How does that work? Um, but, uh, yeah, so, yeah, I'd, I'd have to say that's the case. But I, I, I also think you're being a little bit kind with saying that it's a B team uh, getting in. Uh, the, uh, I mean, both, I will say that both Sergei Zubov and Guy Carboneau do have Bs in their name. <laughs> uh, but... <laughs> But short of that, like, uh, where, where were they on your list? Uh, I, Carbono was number 29, and Zuboff was in the high 40s. Yeah. Yeah, because like, there's no one in your top 10, no one in your top 20. We almost got to 30. Right. Remember. Another so, first time like, ever. I mean, yeah. Yeah, that's that's also kind of crazy. And I know that Haley Wickenheiser is on the list because we haven't done... Uh, or you haven't done female hockey players. It's kind of hard to put everyone in there, although she would have been very – if you did, she's probably got to be in the top five, right? Uh, she probably actually would have been number one, actually, if, if yeah, I would have that, combined. Yeah, that, that, yeah. that makes sense. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, I, I, I might separate that down the road. I don't know. I think I'm actually sort of considering uh, pulling out Don Cherry and just doing all builders, like a builder category, uh, female category, because that's how they look at it anyway. Right. How how do you feel about the builders who got in Jim Rutherford and Jerry York? You know, it's uh, Jim Ruther- uh Jerry York. I'm I'm very happy for uh, an excellent right. uh, an excellent choice, and he should be there for what what he did at Boston. Being, 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 being from Boston, one of the few major cities that seriously cares about college hockey. Like Jerry York is an icon there with the, the whole bean pot and everything we have going on with the the four major the four schools. Uh, like Jerry York is the man. Mm-hmm. So I was very happy to see York get in. Yeah, Rutherford. I keep forgetting that he's a GM. I still, re- I still have his, like an old hockey card of his, you know, from his Red Wings days, which just shows how old I am, which is old. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, and I can't honestly say I know anything about Vaclav Nedimansky. I barely remember um, the, the guy. I, who got in. I, I barely remember what? him. And if you're going to go all yeah. purely international. And, and I think that's something also, too, we have to just, you know, remind everyone. The Hockey Hall of Fame does count everything, uh, including your international accomplishments. That is something that right. they do value. Uh, he is a trailblazer, being sort of like the first major person to arrive, you know, by, by defection. But he wasn't a superstar. He, yeah, he might have been the best player in the Czech League, but that was before the Czech players became the Czech players that we know now. Right, right, but I, yeah. I, so I mean, I, I, it's I just know so little about him. I can't even speak to it. But I will say, just even in on defensemen, the the because the class in in reality is Wickenheiser, Zubov, and Carpenter, right? Right. Like the other guys are builders or or I guess a trailblazer from uh, an important country in hockey history, right? So the, Zubov and Carpenter are the two people we're really looking at here. Where were they for defensemen? For you, well, in terms of uh, like, well, Carbono, Car- well, Carbono was uh, he was the highest rated offensive defenseman. If I'm counting sort of like the Selkie, okay, yeah. So, uh, so Carbono, I'm, I'm, I'm happier for him, and I'm sort of hoping that sort of shines a light. And this is sort of like where the old person in me is coming out because you know defense wins championships, but it does. Uh, you know, he was a three-time uh, Stanley Cup winner and a big part of all three of those wins. Yes, he never had a 60-point season, but that's not what he was on the ice for. And right. there, there's a lot about Guy Carboneau that I massively respect. I'm not even that upset that he's in. It's just, if he, if my theory is right, and I guess, it's, you know, I guess you're agreeing with that. So if this theory is correct it's sort of a, a weird backdoor way to get him in unless they're really thinking that there's going to be a lot of people from the Dallas 1999 Stanley cup winning team. 
who are planning to go well, yeah, well, to how, Toronto. How, how many do we have now? We have at least five, right? Because uh, Zubov and Carbon are both on that team. Yeah. Was I can't, uh, Brett Hull. Madonna clearly was on that team. Was Niedermeyer on that team? I, yes, and then Brett Hull. So you have five Stanley Cup. And, Bre- and Brett yeah. Hull. Yeah, so you got five people on that one team. Now, which is interesting, three out of the six defensemen. Yeah, yeah, it, it, is, it's and, and and I think so. I think maybe uh, the, in the hall of uh, hall of fame, they should probably put that skate that uh, Buffalo fans still think that uh, Brett Hull sort of kicked oh that in. Yeah, that that's that's one of the uh, poor poor Buffalo. Oh, like Buffalo God. has never never won anything, and that was a. Oh no! I'm sorry. That, that, wait, that was Buffalo. No, it was with the Capitals, wasn't it? No, that was Except Buffalo. That was the Capitals. No, no it, was, it was Buffalo. Yeah, it was Buffalo. Because yeah, yeah, the only thing they ever yeah, won was right. AFL sorry. titles. Yeah, I mean that's that's a sucks sucks for them. They they they've never won anything. They keep losing the finals, and that was honestly, if if not as bad, right up there with Scott Norwood missing the kick for them. I mean, there's. That, I mean that's yeah that 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 sucks because that rule got changed since then and that goal probably yeah that goal it just whatever. I mean it's so, bad enough you got to wake up knowing that you live in Buffalo. Buffalo's not so bad. Buffalo's man. bad. It's, uh, I don't know, I've, uh, I, I've had I've had uh, a couple of not so bad days in Buffalo. So I've had more I've had more good days in Buffalo than I have in New York City. So. <laughs> Put it that way. <laughs> so, I, I but, guess uh, I, I went. I, I must have gone to too many Bills games, and then each time I would go to one. You know, just just from living yeah. when I was living in Toronto for many years, and then every right. year I'd say never again. And did, I always did, went back. Did you ever get thrown through a flaming table? Uh, no, <laughs> I've not been thrown. Did you, through. did you ever really go to a Bills game? I mean, that's all I know. I'm a Patriots fan. All I know about the Bills. Is it like setting folding tables on fire and jumping through them on video? I so it's, it's, I it's, must have been on the other side of thing. I must have been on the other side of the parking lot. Yeah. So just just by the way, uh, is Belfour in the Hall of Fame? Yes, he or is. Am I not remembering right now? So you got six because Belfour was a goaltender on that '99 Dallas Stars team. Yeah. Uh, well, I, I got a segue. I know this is sort of like off topic, but every time I think of Ed Belfour. Uh, I know, I know we talked about this before, but I don't think I mentioned that he's on this. I t- we talked once about like how in 2003 or 2004, uh, CBC, our national uh, television station, did the top 100 Canadians of all time, and 11 of them were hockey players. <laughs> I can't believe it's only 11. Yeah, well, one of them was Ed fucking Belfour, and it's like, really? Ed Belfour is one of the top 100 greatest uh, Canadians of all time? Where where did Scotty from Star Trek land or Shatner? I don't recall. Uh, I I know he was on it. Uh, Pam Anderson yeah. was on it of all, uh, which was interesting. Uh, the, but the highest rated hockey player isn't who you'd think. It wasn't Gretzky. It wasn't Gretzky. Hmm. Was it? Uh, I I actually I mean it's not Mario. I take it. No, it wasn't Mario. Wasn't Bobby or oh. it was Don uh, Cherry? It was who? Don Cherry. It was Don Cherry. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I yeah. never think of him as a hockey player. I think it was a coach and a commentator. But yeah. I guess he did play hockey. Well, yeah. yeah for well, tw- well, he was a. I mean, if, if there, if the if when he was playing, like the NHL was the way it was now, with the amount of teams, he probably would have had more than I think the one game he actually played. Okay, but he was like a tw- he was a career minor leaguer like twenty years in the minors, and then you know worked his way up as a coach. So I mean, like you know, like a bruising guy who would who like you know, I think if he was around during the expansion of sixty seven, he probably would have uh, gotten a couple years out of him. But yeah, I mean that just sort of shows <laughs> our dependence on hockey. And again, Ed fucking Belfour, really. But well, again, what do I know? Yeah. You're, you're only Canadian. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, barely, barely, barely anymore. So, I said, well, I think I'm the only barely, Canadian. Barely anymore. Here. Yeah, well, yeah. No, I, I just, uh, I just applied for my uh, visa here, so there you go. Cool. Yeah, and lovely Barbados. But yeah, so Zuboff Carboneau, uh So 
I guess number five and six. Uh, in terms of defensemen, going back to your original question, the highest rated defenseman that I mean, the one I, I'm bigger on than actually most people who even vote on the site. I'd have him higher if I didn't sort of fa- focus in all the other votes. Uh, Doug Wilson for me is my top okay. defenseman. Yeah, that, that that makes sense to me. Yeah, and yeah, Doug, Doug Wilson yeah. makes sense to me. Yeah, uh, actually, I'm a bigger bigger proponent of Randy Carlyle also. But he doesn't get a lot of love for that. It never will. Well, if he hasn't he, yet, he should. And I think yeah. more, and, and, and honestly, more younger people probably think of him as a coach now than anything. No, exactly. And the, he, people forget that this was a, this was a, like a, he was a stud on defense for many, many years. But uh, seemed that his best years, I think, were with Pittsburgh when Pittsburgh was Pittsburgh. Right. Uh, so Carb, yeah. So Zuboff, it doesn't bother me as much uh you know former second team all-star he's got the gold medal carbono the three selkies i mean they're not terrible but it's who you left off the table right well uh, here's here's a question i know you've gone through all of the how awards help you get in the hall of fame or not i know you have a whole series on that did you ever do the selkie I did, yeah. I got. I've got to re- redo that. And the Selkie didn't. The, what, the only real big winner from that was Bob Gainey. So that percentage is going to like skyrocket up. Interesting. Yeah. So because that was never just, really I, a big award that they ever looked at. It's not a sexy award, you know, being the best defensive forward. I mean, it should be, but it right. isn't. Well, well, I wonder if that's changed now, though, because I mean, as even I mean, you're you're a Toronto. Maple Leaf fan, right? Oh, God, no. So, no, God, you're a Senators fan. Yes. That, I apologize. Yeah, that, that just, I, that just I cut me deeply here. In such a way. <laughs> but, but, I mean, the one thing, we play the Maple Leafs in the playoffs every single year, and I say we, and the Boston we, mm-hmm. even though I live in Chicago now. Uh, but the Bruins play the, the Maple Leafs every single year, and every single year on the boards you see how much the Maple Leafs fans hate every single person of the Bruins except for Patrice Bergeron. And Bergeron is the Selkie guy now. I know he lost to Ryan O'Reilly this year. But I'm wondering, because he's got in the low 800s in points, and he's in his 33, 34 age area. area though. He's probably got three or four years left. Mm-hmm. He might get over 1,000. Hopefully he gets over 1,000, maybe 1,100. But I, I always wonder if those Selkies, just because the reputation he has is basically the best defensive forward uh out there if that's enough to push him over the top definitely. when he gets up. Definitely, because he's also got a higher point total than than Carbono does. And True. he's doing it in an era where 800 points, let's say he finishes with, uh, with 950 or even 1,000. That 1,000 is like 1,300 from, from the 80s or 90s. Yeah, that that is true. And, and and he also has, he's also one of like four people who has a Stanley Cup, a... Uh, Olympic gold medal and a Canadian Junior Hockey Championship. Right. Yeah. So, so I, th- that, I think Bergeron. That will make a difference too. Yeah. I think I, I think Bergeron is definitely a future Hall of Famer. So like, so this thing for Carbonell really helps him. I don't know that Zuboff getting in helps really anybody. No. Uh, although I mean maybe Zolly Zalapsky if the letter Z now somehow becomes important to the Hall of Fame. That's about it. <laughs> so. I just really wanted to bring up Zarley's laps at some point. So. It, it's like it, it, it's through, we all have those names that you know I that, that are the go to. It's, it's, it's one of my favorite. I, as we were talking about this earlier about Zubov getting in, whether that meant uh, Tom Curvers and Darius Kasparaitis <laughs> got in as well at some point. Darius Kasparaitis is still maybe my favorite hockey name of all time. I just every everything about that name is just it's just fun to say and it makes you think like. He has some disease that turns him into a ghost. I just always loved his name. I always wanted him on the Bruins just so I could root for him, but he was always stuck on like the Islanders. So I could watch Grey's Anatomy and Meredith Grey could tell someone you've got a serious case of Darius Kasparitis, and I wouldn't blink an eye. <laughs> she, have you, are you sure she hasn't done that already? Sure, she very, she very well might have. I would have believed it more from Sandra O, oh, just because another Canadian, so I have to believe everything... She sort of does, and I think she's awesome. But again, I've just segued God knows where. Right. Anyway, let's get back to who they skipped over, right? Yeah, so uh, 
there is a when I when after this sort of like came out on Twitter, so the first or just on social media in general, the first thing I did is I wanted to see what other what so I just typed in a bunch of names and just to see like where the bigger snub perception was, and it seems to be uh, which surprised me a bit, uh, not because he's a senator, just because I didn't think that many people even paid attention. That was Alfredson. Yeah. So Alfredson, I think we talked about this uh, at one point, I don't know, maybe even a year ago when we originally brought this up, because it, that came down to Alfredson versus Turgeon. Because I'm, I'm a big Pierre Turgeon fan, mm-hmm. mainly because I don't care about the fact he walked out on the Canadian national team. But We didn't um, walk out, he just sat anyway. there. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so, But I understand that has a lot more, that leaves a... Uh, bitter taste of the, votes, of the mouths of a lot of voters, even though he's the number one guy who's eligible for the Hockey Hall of Fame in terms of points, who's not in. And but will I be. Never, for ye- and if we have this conversation in 10 years, he still will be. You think so? Yes. Interesting. But, because, like, there, there, there are a few people, but, I mean, Alfredson is... Alfred Mason was somebody, again, that I saw his entire career because he played in the same division as the Bruins and he was a hell of a player and everything like that. And towards the end of his career, there was like, yeah, he's going to be a fall of famer and everything. I think the fact he played with one franchise or did he, did he leave at the end of his career? I don't yeah. Remember. He had a, he, his um, final year was with Detroit. Okay. So I, that, actually I do remember that, but essentially he's spent like 17, 18 years in the league and 17 and a half of them or whatever were with, were with, uh, were with Ottawa, but they never actually won anything. No, they they, they never he's, did. He's had he's had a lot of points. He was a really great guy, but it's it's amazing to me because when when they were talking about snubs last year on ESPN, the first person they brought up was Alfredson. I, I just his, I mean he's he was a hell of a player, but he is a, it, just in terms of points, he's way down below a whole bunch of other people on this list, and it's not like he. Did he ever win a major award? Uh, he was a second team All Star, six uh, six time All Star. Uh, I think he won. I'm trying to remember, like one of the, one of those uh, minor awards that they sort of give for perseverance the was Lady the Bang. Masterton. No, not the Lady <laughs> Bang. Like, I have to look that up. Uh, but no, it wasn't the Lady Bang, which is another uh, one of those trophies. I'm still trying to figure out whether I respect her or not. But that's a discussion for another time. I'm wondering if I'm wondering if it's like the worst trophy in sports that you can win, pretty much. What's well, the worst name trophy? Of like, it's, it's certainly a terrible name trophy, but like, I don't know. It just it seems it's a it's an odd it's an odd thing, particularly for hockey. If you can't use that so. in a bar to try and pick up somebody, like, yeah, I won the Lady <laughs> Bang. <laughs> you know, it's, it's not going to work. Have you seen that Las Vegas? Have you seen that Las Vegas commercial where? The four guys pick up a yes uh, that had flowers in it and go yeah. around to saying campion, campion. I feel like the lady Bing. If you tried that with, you were like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, no, serious. It's a real trophy. Yeah, it doesn't look like one. <laughs> Sorry. I don't even remember what it looks like. Although hockey does have the most the most awesome trophies in all of sports. Oh well, I mean, yeah, the Stanley Cup is. By far the greatest trophy ever created. Oh, heart trophy is gorgeous too. Like an uh, like absolutely heart is gorgeous. Yeah, no, definitely. So, 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 but I mean, Alfredson is one of the people who clearly was passed over. Somebody else who oh, never gets any love, and I don't understand why. And it's mainly because he's he's a local boy for me from growing up. Is Ronick? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that, that's Jeremy, his name Jeremy, came up a lot too. But, but Ronick seems to. This is going to be a weird comparison. But Ronick seems to me, in terms of the way he's dealt with, seems to be the Bon Jovi of hockey players. Like, when before Bon Jovi got in, like, when their name cut off, people were just kind of scoff, like, ah, Bon Jovi. They're, they're not in good anything. They shouldn't be getting in anything like that. Even though they had as many credentials, seemingly, as pretty much anyone else. Mm-hmm. Uh, particularly if you're talking rock stuff. I just, I don't understand the apathy towards Ronick. Like he was he was a hell of, he was one of the scariest hockey players to play against. He was there and I'd say he's a local boy. He he and Tony Monti, the two best guys on those Blackhawks teams, were both from just outside like not far from where I grew up. 
Uh, Amante literally lived four streets away from me um, when he was growing up. But, like, I, I just, I never understood, I don't understand why he isn't as viewed as serious a candidate as some other people. I, I don't know either. Uh, Ronick's another one of our. He's been in our top ten since I started this thing. He's definitely he's definitely got the, you know some credentials. He could have definitely gone. He, he could have gone in this year, I think, as as Alfredson right. very well could have. But again, those are two guys. If the Haley theory is correct, they would supersede her. Alfredson for sure. Ronick, I'm not so positive on. Mm. Interesting. So. So, I mean, just, just look at it this way. So, the guys who are eligible who are not in in terms of points, number one is Patrajan. Yep. Two is Jeremy Roenick. Three is Bernie Nichols, mm-hmm. who would I don't think would be overshadowing anybody. No. Uh, he's just he's just not big enough a name. Four is Vincent Dampus. Um, I don't feel like he'd be overshadowing anybody. Five is Brindamore. Brindamore might. He might. He might. But, I mean, I don't feel like any of those, may, maybe Ronick, you're right, maybe Alfredson. But in terms of, I, I almost feel it cheapens, if, if, if your conspiracy theory is correct, I almost feel it cheapens her induction if they're trying to protect her. Because she, she doesn't need protection. I, I don't think it's sense? about protection, though, because, you know, I, I agree. Like H- Haley's uh, tough as shit. She doesn't need to be protected from anybody, anything. And... I, I don't think that her induction is cheapened in any capacity. It's I, I think it's the Hockey Hall of Fame wanting to look progressive is what I think. But I'm not sure how you look progressive by inducting somebody who, who should be inducted with a whole bunch of people who, granted, they Zubov and Carmino are now Hall of Famers, and let's never take that away from them. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, unlike a certain baseball player who's getting inducted, who I don't necessarily think deserves it. But anyway. Um, D- does it rhyme with Rarold Baines? It, it does rhyme with Rarold Baines. It's very strange. <laughs> um, but uh, it just, it seems to me, I don't feel like, let's just say, let's say like the other three are still in. So the other two builders and uh, the guy from the Czech Republic is are both in, right? So we have two spots open. If you give those two spots to... Alfredson and uh, Ronick, just for a heck of it, right? Mm-hmm. I don't think her her star doesn't shine any brighter, and it almost it almost shines her her her, her star is not diminished by there being there, and it may even shine brighter because we compare what she did to eat Alfredson and Ronick. She's right up there with them. You know what I'm saying? As opposed to two people who are not quite as Stand, not quite as big as standouts mm-hmm. within it. Like I, I, I feel like short of her, this is the worst class they've come up with since the year they just did Dino Cicero. Yeah, uh, yeah, exactly, exactly. I was thinking the same thing. I don't know which class is worse. I, I think this one, in a way, because it didn't have to be. Right, agreed. Agreed. It was just. And Cicerelli is interesting, is it right in between points between Dampus and Brindamore in terms of career? Mm-hmm. But, like, it's, it, it, I just, I don't, if your theory is correct, and I honestly think it is, I don't get why, if they did what they did. It, I think, I think, I feel like they're trying to protect someone who doesn't need protection uh, and trying to show they're progressive, and then it's end up being, they're ending up being a little condescending. If that makes sense. Yeah, the only thing is I don't think anyone else is... I, I, I think we're an island here. I haven't seen anyone else sort of put this out. So it's not like it's going to take anything... It's not going to take anything away from her because I don't think anyone else thinks this. Yeah. I mean, it's entirely, it's entirely possible. Because, I mean, I'm, I'm an American. I can't honestly say I don't know a ton about women's hockey or international women's hockey. But, like, when you look at what she did, there's just absolutely no question. Well, there's not much to know. Look, I have the same argument about women's hockey. I have mad respect for it every time I watch Canada play USA. Beyond that, there's nothing. There's nothing there. Yeah. It it's, 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 uh, doesn't belong in the Olympics, a very unpopular opinion. But when you've got the same two countries battling it out, and you know that nobody else is – and I know Sweden fluked out a silver once – 
I beat in the States and, and one thing. Was it Sweden or Finland? I forget. It doesn't even matter. I think it's Finland. It was it Finland? Okay. So it, it, yeah, I think it's Finland, but it doesn't really matter. Yeah, and it's 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 also one of those things too, and I think I'm gonna go on this whole thing. Maybe also because, you know, like the women's world cup is on, which you know, is a far greater tournament right now, but the same thing sort of will happen. Uh, unpopular opinion, I'll just sort of like to, like, uh, uh, I'm reading a lot, well, they're not paid as much as as, uh, as male players. Well, yeah, because they don't generate as much money. It's not a gender thing. It's it, what you're bringing in thing. It's that simple. Well, except except in the U.S., that's not true. The, the women have out have out earned the men the women's teams out earned the men's team for the last three or four years at this point and they're making that like the u.s by getting to the point they've gotten to i think the whole team makes like a ninety thousand dollar bonus and the u.s team had gotten there they'd all be close to a million right so, but i mean it there's a there's a huge gap there but again the the, the women that's the women u.s women's team versus u.s men's team not the women's world cup versus the, the men's world cup Right, but a lot of the those times, are, those are again two different things. Sure, but a lot of times when people when they're making that comparison, they're compare they're also they're also adding what the what the what the men are making on a professional level too. So I think they compared like one thing where it was like Lionel Messi made just as made more than every female in this tournament. Well, Messi Messi is worth more. I hate to say it, but he is. That's that could change. Right. That could and that probably should. Right. The one thing I will say about women's soccer, having gone through this now, is like in women's hockey, I think you're right. There's two, maybe we get a third or a fourth team in there for, for women's hockey, and that's it. For women's soccer, say when Brandi Chastain took off her, her jersey there, mm-hmm. there were probably about four teams that had a legitimate shot of winning the World Cup. Now, the women's soccer has moved to the point where there's, I would say, seven or eight who right. have a legitimate shot of of winning it. And I mean, and then you still get a 2014 tournament. You still get Thailand in there. who's getting beat 13, mm-hmm. nothing, but, but you, the vast majority of teams, I mean, they're all, mo- almost all the European teams plus the U S and Brazil and Japan usually have, have a legitimate shot of winning, which is a long way from where they were 20 years ago. And now everything's improving. Yeah. And abs- once countries that kick, and what countries care, who care about soccer start caring about women's soccer, like Argentina getting a point, this actually two points in this tournament makes mm-hmm. a, will make a massive difference for soccer in that country. So, and then it's about it that, that all improves, right? And then it's about it translating into the pro into the pro thing. Uh, I haven't, I don't know that much about uh, the women's pro soccer league. I do know that it's now healthy, and it's drawing yeah. reasonably well. Uh, I know. When, I know that there's sort of like a. There was a couple. Uh, I believe it was Hillary Knights and someone else. I, I can't recall who else. Sort of like uh, calling for the NHL to do what uh, the NBA did with the creation of the WNBA, which you know the 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 numbers came out. What a big money loss that is. And just at the end of the day, people are going to pay for what they want to see, and it's not like it doesn't happen. Right. Two of the biggest uh, is again. I'm not a tennis guy, but I would think. Serena Williams watching her play would be a bigger draw than Roddick, or I don't even know who the I number one male. Team. Yeah, so and and, and yeah. when Ronda Rousey was fighting, it, it's weird. I mean, like, I, I, she, right? I, I, th- I think Serena Williams. I mean, the the three, the big three in men's tennis is Goran Ivanovic, not Goran Ivanovic. What am I saying? Uh, uh, Novak Djokovic, uh, Goran Ivanovic. Going back twenty years, so I have no idea where that name came from. Uh, Novak Djokovic, Federer, and um, Nadal, right? I think any three of those guys uh, and are they're all incredibly amazing. I don't think any of them necessarily are draw Serena, honestly. And, but not North she, America, she anyway. Only, yeah, she may be the only female athlete in the world who can say that about them. Yeah, I, when when Rousey was in MMA, she was a bigger draw than any male. It's weird. Well, that, yeah, that, a, a friend of mine's got a daughter, and I and so like a little like a little kid. And so I was talking to, to uh, the, the mom, and she's like, "Oh, I've got to get her into sports." And I said, "Well, it's either it's either tennis or MMA, because right now, that's where that's what two most b- different sports where women can like make a ton of money." Yeah, 
Well, I remember when ESPN used to, you know, show the show the sports we used to now Joker on the Ocho. <laughs> I remember thinking that the two the two most famous pool players in the world were Janet Lee and Iwa Mataya. Uh, so, but that's the only other thing I could think of anymore. She was the only I one I remembered was so. Janet Lee. Yeah, Iwa, yeah, I remember Iwa Mataya because she had the. Uh, she also had the uh, the equivalent of Fred McGriff's Tom Amansky video. She was the one who had the uh, learn how to play pool video that would play at two o'clock in the morning on on, on ESPN two. So, but that... anyway, we are way we got way far away from hockey. <laughs> <laughs> on, don't we always? From whatever the topic is, we always do. We always do but I, I, I thought Zoli Zalapski was going far far afield, but Iwo Mataya coming up has probably not happened in a conversation with me in about fifteen years. So anyway, I, I'm going to take that as a badge <laughs> of honor. <laughs> Just by the way, Dino Cesarelli was inducted in 2010. Mm-hmm. Uh, the other people who went in with him were again two female hockey players, so Angel uh, James and Cameron Granado. Yeah, so Angela James, yeah, and, she and James was a major pioneer. In, in women's hockey, right, and and, and, and Cami Granado is when you think women's hockey in the U.S., she's the, pretty much the first person who comes to mind. So, but again, it's interesting though. You had two very strong female candidates get in in 2010, mm-hmm. and the only the only uh, NHL player who got in is somebody who, let's face it, Dino Cesarelli was a pretty darn good hockey player. But he's in no way, shape, or form going to overshadow shadow either of those ladies. Right, but at that point, they they, they don't have the same profile, though, that, that Haley does. No, oh, I, 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 I 100% agree. I'm just saying it's more evidence towards your theory of the way they do things at the Hall. Yeah. I'm, 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 I'm not comparing Cam Granada and Angela James to, to, uh, to Wickenhausen. So, uh, it's, it's, no, yeah. so another snub that kept coming up. Like in people's minds, anyway. Uh, Taryn Fleury. Yeah, interesting. And you know, I think yeah, a, lo- uh, a lot of that had to do with you know just because he sort of remained more uh, a bit of a profile, you know, with with the the book that came out, and you know, he's on the lecture circuit. Or I think he's on a lecture circuit period, like uh, periodically, you know, just for like what happened to him here, uh, opening up about his sexual abuse. So. He's got a, a bigger name than other people with the same accomplishments. Yeah. The... Um, I mean, Flurry. Flurry always just seemed like somebody who should have been better than he was, to me. Uh, I mean, he was he I mean, he has over a thousand points. Mm-hmm. He had that, but I just I just always think of that stretch with him at the Rangers towards the end of his career because he was he was mostly a flame. But mm-hmm. that stretch towards the end of his career at the Rangers, just I remember him more him more at this point for being a free agency bust than than much of his career with the Flames. And that might just be again because I'm an American mm-hmm. and the Calgary Flames weren't much on my TV. Um, but Flurry to me is he didn't leave the game with the whiff of a Hall of Famer. If that makes sense, and again, he has over a thousand points. He's almost eleven hundred points. Mm-hmm. But uh, I don't know. I've, how, I mean, how how am I wrong on Flurry? I'm willing to be talked into this. No, I mean, he's he's my ultimate, per, in my opinion, my ultimate fence candidate because he's he's my hockey Dave Parker because he abused himself out of a of a Hall of Fame lock, and he had the story. He was the scrappy kid. Who, who was undersized, he never should have made it, and then he was, and he was super popular. And he had the hockey world by the balls, and he let it go. Yeah. And... Yeah, I just... But a lot yeah, of... I mean, that, that's, I, I, yeah. I, think, I think that's the taste. Like, he, mm-hmm. he should have been better than he was. And then when he signed the big contract with the Rangers, he just, I mean, he had, what, 15 goals in a full season that first year. Um, and it like it just I think that that just registered in my head with Flurry first that he was a small guy with a lot of skill who never quite lived up to it. Um, but there are a lot of guys like that, most of whom ended up in the early two thousands Rangers, to be honest, um, <laughs> who who uh, should have been better than they were, and it, it, that that might just leave a taste, bad taste in my mouth. If I'm looking at where he is in the rankings. Yeah, he's definitely a candidate. I. I 
I feel much more strongly about about Pierre Turgeon than I do about Teo Fleury. The other one that came up a lot was, and he definitely would have overshadowed because the ceremony is always in Toronto. It's a former Maple Leaf, uh, but bigger star with Buffalo. And that's guy who's currently number one. He won't be next year. Uh, Alexander McGillney. Yeah, McGillney feels like Hall of Famer to me. Um, I, yeah, I, uh, McGillney and Pavel Bure, if anyone who ever played NHL 94 or NHL 95, the two greatest hockey games ever created, um, both Bure and, and McGillney were just unstoppable forces and just felt like they were, just felt like they were incredible, if that makes sense. Um, and at least to me as a kid, that how good they were, the, the Bo Jackson-ness of them on the video game. Uh, made it seem even larger than life and everything. He he just seems like a Hall of Famer, and it's a little strange to me he is not in. So you bring up video games, I've like, got a tangent coming. It just reminds me, of, I forget which NHL one it was, but you could sort of like uh, do a giant, uh, like clear the puck by center ice, and then the goalie would go behind it, but then would come back, and then you, then you have an empty net. Oh, interesting. I don't think I ever, I wish I'd known about that thing. I, did, I don't think I ever did it. Uh, now, McGillney has fewer points at Flurry um, and played for a longer period of time. Yeah, uh, but uh, Mc- yeah, d- he got injured. That- Injuries really took him out, and he had that one, like, I think what what, pe- what keeps people out is people thinking that he just had that one monster season, a couple of good ones, and they're not wrong. Right. Yeah, and, and if you look at McGillney, the two people he's in between on the all-time points list are he's just behind a uh, tie between Martin San Luis, who got in last year and Doug Waite. And behind him is Alexei Kovalev. And Kovalev's another one of those guys who just feels like he was on the early 2000s Rangers, who feels like he was a massively un- underwhelming candidate. And if you're a statistics person, it's also a guy like Alexei Kovalev is like, Ugh. yeah, if you're new with Kovalev, you're probably not getting in. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I personally, my personal gut feeling on McGillney is I he feels like a Hall of Famer to me, but now that if you sit down and look at the stats, I can understand why he's a little bit further behind other people. Yeah, and I think that's what hurts him, but then if I'm if the, my conspiracy thing is right, McGillney, former Leaf, uh, you know, also, you know, when you're around Buffalo, would have would have would have headlined. Flurry, you know, right now he's a he's known more in Canada than ever before. Uh, mainly because mm-hmm. because of uh like you're aware of the Graham James uh Allegations. Well, not allegations. He he's yeah. in jail. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so Alfredson, you know, big, big big name. So any one of those three would have sort of done that. So I, I you put two guys, former Dallas Stars. Uh, and I, I I can't I can't get away from this theory. I really can't. And I can understand. I mean, it's. I, I'm, I'm. If you remember, I completely agreed with your theory instantaneously. Yeah. So maybe you and I against the world on this, but um, yeah, it's it's strange. The, 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 I think this, it's weird we're having this conversation in the first place because there there are. I'm not going to say there were a ton of great candidates. Somebody's getting in the Hall of Fame. It's just that the candidates they ended up picking, like if it were Carboneau and somebody else, I don't think we'd have a bigger problem, right? But the fact that it's Carboneau and somebody worse than Carboneau makes it seem like what just happened here. Uh, totally. It, it's it's a very, very strange group. It's not like Guy Carboneau and Sergei Zuboff, the day when this was coming out, were saying, uh, no, no, I, I, let's uh, hold off on that tea time. I might get a call from the Hall of Fame. <laughs> exactly right. Yeah, because, well, again, if it's, if it's, let's just say Alfredson, if it's Alfredson and Carboneau, you're like, oh, hey, cool, Carboneau got in. Right? Mm-hmm. But because it's Carboneau and Zubov, and Carboneau's is the better of the two. And you're like, wait, what happened here? Or even if it, if it were Alfredson and Zubov, we'd still be like, wow, I can't believe Zubov got in, but you wouldn't be as big a deal. Uh, but yeah, it's, just, it's, a, it's, a strange, it's a strange class. I'm, it's weird that we're talking about it like this. So, Well, no, no not how we would have. I mean, we would have uh, gone, like, if, if we would have done this before, we would never would have picked those two guys in a, in a prediction. Never. No. Would have no. agreed on Haley in a minute, and then just gone over trying to pick up pick three other guys, and we never would have came up with these two. Never. I agree. Yeah, we would have we would have had our argument over Alfredson or Turgeon. Right. 
is what we would have done. So, so next year we already know. I think we know who the headliner headliner is. It's going to be again, La. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. Jerome Ginla is uh, a player with twenty seven fewer points than Turgeon. I'd like to point out. But anyway, <laughs> no. Jerome Ginla is a, is a hundred percent a Hall of Famer. Like, yeah, and uh, two more uh, two more Olympic gold medals too. Because you know he he yeah, can, uh, just, he, he got to represent his can his country. Yeah, well, yeah. That was a dig at took me a second. <laughs> um, yeah, but no, I, as, as someone who got to watch Aginla for a year or two when he was in Boston, mm-hmm. um, that dude that dude was just total class the whole way. Um, and I'm, I'm, more, I'm, I'm more than happy for him to be there. Is anyone else significant you think who's going to be up next year? Not really, no. There's, there's, there's no one. No, <laughs> nobody. Nobody's gonna no. get a look. Yeah. So then you'd have to retire in seventeen, right? Uh, yes. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Have to retire in seventeen. Actually, okay, and be done year. also with any kind of pro hockey in Europe. Also, too. Okay. So someone like. Uh, like Marion Hossa, I think was done in 17, but he's still playing over in Europe, I believe, right? I, let's take a look here. Hossa, I think, uh, is a definite Hall of Famer, yeah, cause if, but if he's still playing in Europe, which I think he is, I know the Sedins come up you know, shortly. Yeah, the Sedin, well, I think the Sedins are 18. Yeah, they both retire in 18. Uh, how about Mr. Coyote, Shane Doan? No. <laughs> no. I just wanted to hear you say it. No, I mean, and again, like mad respect, but when you're sort of like the best player on a shit team forever. Yeah. Let's see. Actually, Host is yeah, still under contract here. Yeah, he last played in 2017, Wait, but it's, he's injured out. Yeah, Hosa, Hosa is an interesting one because he hasn't played since. Yeah, because he—that's right. He's got—he's got that other issue. That's what. Yeah, that's what. He, that's what's going on there. So yeah, Hosa is technically—he's el- he'll be eligible. Okay. Yeah, I'm just looking through people retired seventeen. Then and once you get past Dome, the next best name I can see is Mike Ribeiro, and there's no way Mike Ribeiro's getting on the Hall of Fame. Right. Yeah, Hosa so. won't get in next. Ne- I think Alfredson's going to get his due next year. Okay. You know that also way also way too. Uh, Toronto doesn't have to put a a form a senator as a headliner. <laughs> I don't actually believe that's the reason, but yeah. Well, you actually you never know. I'm. Uh, it was funny when the uh, when the Bruins and uh, and uh, Maple Leafs were playing the playoffs every year. All the Maple Leafs fans accused the Bruins team of getting. Uh, He's getting preferential treatment from the league in terms of fines and stuff because uh, we used to have Campbell on our team and his dad used to be head of of uh, of discipline yeah. for the league. Yes, but, but he hasn't he hasn't been on our team for I don't know four years at this point. But they still think we're getting preferential treatment, and of course Bruins fans think that Toronto gets preferential treatment because everything is in Toronto. So it's 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 a it's a competition between who has better preferential treatment if you're ever on the internet whenever you play. So is it that way with the Senators as well in Toronto? Uh, I mean, well, there's not there's hardly any Ottawa fans in Toronto. I it might have been it. <laughs> okay. Yeah, there there wasn't a, a whole lot of a lot of us down there, and that was because mo- most. And you know, most people from Ottawa don't generally sort of like make their way, like uh, make their way down to Toronto to eventually live. Uh, and Toronto, Toronto fans always travel well too. They're they're any any place. Uh, well, I don't have to tell you. Probably you've probably seen that enough in Boston. Yeah, I mean Boston fans travel pretty well. But we're, they're also spread all over the country. People come to Boston for college, pick up the teams, and then take it to wherever they end up living. Mm-hmm. At the end, so yeah, uh, the, the Boston teams are pretty usually have pretty good support pretty much everywhere. Um, I would say that was true with the Patriots up before Kraft took over the team, and really since Brady and Belichick took over. Um, but the rest of the teams have had have had major support at least since well, at least since the incredible dream season of '67 for the Red Sox. So, 
Um, Are they going to be putting a massage yeah. parlor in that stadium, you think? I'm sorry? Will they be putting a massage parlor there in uh, Foxborough? I'm, I'm sure there's already one that he knows about. So uh, I mean, it's, 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 his, it's his town. I'm sure there's an underground one that he knows all about. Interesting. What do you think? Now, the fact that everything's going to get dismissed on him, do you think, because we talked that now that Pat Bowling got in, mm-hmm. the next Hall of Famer owner, next Hall of Fame owner up without really any other people, unless you think Art Modell's getting in, is Kraft. Mm-hmm. How much do you think this whole Orchids of Asia thing affects that. Two-year delay. Two-year delay? Yeah. Interesting. Okay. Yeah, because I think ultimately the whole thing is going to be remembered on message boards. But other than that, like, he's not going to jail. It's not going to be prosecuted because the whole thing's going away. Unfortunately, the ladies who are involved are all going to probably end up with criminal records because they don't have crafts, high-priced lawyers. Right. And um, that's got a sort of... Uh... This might be a pun. Blow over. Mm. I don't even know if that was a real pun yeah. or not. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it wasn't really. Okay. But it, it's just, yeah, it's just, it's just interesting that, like, it, exactly what that has to do with him getting in and everything like that. By the way, one other thing I want to talk to you about with, I don't know if you've done a podcast on this yet. If you want to go through the fictitious bands, yes. I have some opinions. Well, you know, uh, well, then you're going to like this because then you, you're signed up for a couple weeks because the semi-finalists are, are going to be announced uh, the next couple days. Oh, excellent. Can you just tell me, I, 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 have a, I have a pet project here, and I'm sure I'm one of the few people who actually cares about the, this group. Is Sing Street making it through? No. Oh, dear God. Almost. All right. But they, can, they didn't make it to the next can, round. Can I, can I make my appeal here to... Anyone voting next sure. year for the fictitious? Absolutely. If first of all, if you have not seen the movie Sing Street, you have to see it. Uh, secondly, Sing Street is a band created when a fourteen-year-old, fifteen-year-old kid sees a girl at the school for trouble girls across the street standing out front smoking, and makes up a band on the spot so he could shoot a music video with her in it. What is more rock and roll than that? He sees a beautiful woman, decides, he's like, hey, we're going to make a music video. Do you want to be in there for a band? Convinces her to do it, and then tells his buddies, guys, we got to form a band. And then they have a whole bunch. They go through all these things. Like, he, they go for a cure phase. They go through, like, a Fox Seagulls phase. The music con- constantly keeps developing. And this kid is in a terrible place in Ireland, and it's his way of getting out. Now, does he get out? You never know, because it's an Irish story. They can't actually have a happy ending. But... <laughs> That movie is absolutely incredible. The music's incredible. The kids can actually play music, and uh, and it's 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 just a fabulous movie. If you haven't seen it, you have to see it. Sing Street is going to be my pet project, banging on the gavel, trying to get him in until it's time to get him. Now, granted, they've only been out for like five years, so they don't have the longevity built up that some of these other groups do, like jo- uh, Josie and the Pussycats or. Uh, Gem the Holograms or whoever else is out there. I can say both but of them I'm, are semi-finalists. I'm sorry? I can say that both of them are semi-finalists. Yeah, there you go. But, like, I'm I'm going to pound the table for Sing Street every single chance I get going for it. But, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm excited to see and I'm excited to vote. And once again, when does the uh, fictitious athlete go to semifinals? Uh, that's actually, I'm actually going to put that out tomorrow. Wow, my timing is good. <laughs> so there you go. That's our next two shows, buddy. Wow. Well, excellent. Well, I'm I'm looking forward to that. I uh, I will I will uh, vote early and often, and uh, I can't vote often. I will vote early anyway, <laughs> and uh, try and tr- try and get some people in there because you have it set up the right way. You can vote and then you're done. So unless you go get another right, idea. right, just just sort of keep it honest. Uh, my vote means as much as everyone else's. Right. Otherwise, honestly, you'd be on there every single day. <laughs> you'd be uh, on the only time with the fictitious halls that I don't want to say fudged it, but I just didn't want it. I just did not want Rocky Balboa not to be the first in the first class. So yeah. just put Rocky and, and, in right and, away, and then everything else. Yeah, well, I mean, that was that just made sense as your first 
I mean, that was way like, hey, Rocky's getting in and we're going to have a Hall of Fame. It'd be kind of like what the Baseball Hall of Fame should have just done with Babe Ruth. Like, hey, by the way, Babe Ruth is in and we're going to have a Hall of Fame. You can vote whoever else you want in, but Ruth is in. Right? It's, it's, the same, it's the same sort of thing. You know where I actually got that idea from, uh, as obscure as this will sound? The WWE Hall of Fame, which created, which, huh? on, yeah, on one episode... Uh, a year after he passed away on one of the, on their regular TV shows, he said, okay, Andre the Giant's now in our Hall of Fame, which they didn't have before. Right. And, it was and just, it's kind of hard to argue any, it's hard to argue that Andre the Giant does a blog in the WWE Hall of Fame should they have had one. Right. So, so. The, the, they just made him a, sort of like, a, this, is the, this is the class, uh, this is it, he's in his own class. Did this, So I just would do the same for Rocky, who I guess... I could make him a dual nominee for the ficti- for the fictitious con- contributor as a trainer. I guess that is true. At this point, yeah, he is a trainer. Wow. Mm. Maybe I could do that for the next class. I never even thought. I just thought of that now. Look, look, look at that. Amazing what I come up with. It's sober near midnight. I'm out of beer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I mean, what are you doing? You got... We down Barbados. What's a, what's a Barbados beer? Uh, the the main one here. It's called Banks. And when you're down here, and I'm telling you, you're coming down here. Okay. Yeah, it's up. It's, uh, it's uh, like Banks deputy. Like more, almost everything here is expensive except for rum and beer. But you know, a lot of these places that I'll just sort of like go to, it'll be like four. It's like four beers for ten bucks. The sad thing is, well, ten ten Barbados bucks, which is like uh. Half a dollar in U.S. Oh wow! Yeah, okay. yeah. But the shitty thing though is, like, like when I start going to the bar here, when I do understand people here, because I don't under when they're talking to each other, I have no idea what anybody's saying. They're all speaking English, but I don't, I don't know what the fuck they're saying. <laughs> which makes me feel very, very, very white, or whiter than I normally am, which is pretty fucking pasty. The beer here, it's <laughs> it's two hundred and uh, I don't know this in. Uh, ounces but it's a uh, it, the regular beer size is like 333 milliliters in canada here it's 250 okay so the first time i got a couple of beers i said look why, why'd you give me in the, some baby size look, and i'm not even to, tr- to disrespect the Beijing people by trying to do an accent here because i can't do it but they're looking at me like what are you talking mm-hmm. about yeah so that's that's eight and a half ounces Okay. In 250 milliliters, eight and a half ounces, essentially. Not even. It's even 0.45351 ounces, according to the uh, Make the Rest of the World uh, Understandable to Americans calculator I have here. So, and 333 milliliters is 11.2 ounces. Yeah, that's okay. Yeah, because so, I remember seeing that number like on the side of the bottle. Yeah, the 11. So, it's a lot more impressive also, too, now that I don't live in the mountains and I'm more on sea level. I mean, my drinking prowess has increased tenfold. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah, so like if I go, it's like, but yeah, it, I had 10 beers. But, like it's, but it, takes, it takes longer for your water to boil now, so. Yes. <laughs> There's that. It's definitely a different world out here, that's for sure. Yeah, I, I can't imagine. Like, I think I told you before, this one of my good friends is, uh, I grew up with her in Boston. She's been in New York now since basically graduate college, about 18 years. But she spent the last few uh, winters working as like a fitness instructor down in the U.S. Virgin Islands. She'd leave like right after Thanksgiving and get back, like right before Easter. And she's just decided she's just going to move to the Virgin Islands full time uh, starting this November. And uh, I'm just, and she, I'm just like, why didn't I think of that? <laughs> why did I just think of like moving down there? I always think of when I was on spring. The one and only time I really went for somewhere for spring break in college, it's my senior year, and me and some of my fraternity brothers ended up on a cruise uh, to like Jamaica and the Cayman Islands and a couple other places. And uh, I met a kid in the Cayman Islands at Stingray City, who worked on one of those boats bringing all the tourists out. Mm-hmm. And he was a year older than me, uh, and he had he would had come down the spring break previously uh, from his last year at Yale, and he was well, however many credits short of graduating from Yale. And he sat there. He went on that boat and thought to himself, "You know, I could work my entire life to maybe retire to a place like this, or I could just drop out of school, ask the guy if he could give me a job, and work and stay here all the time." <laughs> and that's what he ended up doing two months short of graduating from Yale. 
I often think about that kid and wonder if he's happy. Uh, and now I have a whole bunch of people I care about who are now moving to the islands. I'm like, maybe they, you guys have the right idea. Because I can tell you, living in Boston and living in Chicago, weather here ain't great. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I haven't, I haven't uh, gone through uh, the rainy season yet. I mean, it's uh, east of the hurricane window, or alley, so should be okay for that area or for for that aspect. But uh, yeah, you know, only complaint, uh, only complaint I have is like every time I go somewhere without my wife, uh, or if I'm in the big, the bigger city, Bridgetown here, it's like everyone tries to fucking sell me cocaine. <laughs> really? And, yeah, and it's like. I, 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 I always thought I'd look too old for that. I guess not. But it'd be, it's the same damn conversation I have over and over. So a guy will come up to me. He says, hey, you know, the usual shit. Like, how long are you here for? It's like, no, I, I moved here. I lived here. Uh, but then they ignore that completely and then go right to the, the, the pitch. So do you like to party? And I'll say, no. <laughs> or you know, cause, or so, so, so you want some weed? So you want some herb? No. Or do you want a snowboard? No. Need some girls? No. And then what, what do you do for fun? Nothing. Old and married. I'm, I'm old and married. Do crossword puzzles count? Yeah. <laughs> and it, it's the same... As, as I mentioned, I have a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And it's the same conversation over and over and over. And one of these took place as I'm going in, going to the police station to uh, get my fingerprints done for part, for part of the immigration process. I'm telling this guy as he's trying to sell me coke. Yeah, and I'm 500 meters away from the, from uh, from the cop shop, and that's where I'm going because I'm like, oh, okay, that's interesting. Well, if you ever need stuff, let me know. <laughs> <laughs> How much is 500 meters in ounces? I I'm still haven't figured out that conversion. 500 meters in ounces? I was kidding. Oh, <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, went over my head. It's clearly, it's. T- Clearly, it's past this old man's bedtime. Clearly, <laughs> yeah. Well, I'll, I'll let I'll let you get to bed. But um, yeah, thanks for this. And if there's uh, we we have some things coming up. I just you know I'm going I'm getting together. I haven't actually told you this. I'll tell you on the air here. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm getting together my top forty eligible band, first time eligible bands for this year. I'm a, I've written about twenty six of them. Nice. I, I love uh, that series. I'll, I'll get, I'll get that out to you for the site coming up here, and then yeah. I'll post them on Facebook one at a time. And yeah, for sure, I'd love that. Uh, part of the part of the reason part of the reason I haven't finished it is I'm trying to figure out a lot of the data I use. I originally got from a I wouldn't say maybe a sister site, more than a competitor site, uh, as to when they had people eligible for the first time, and I realized that it wasn't necessarily accurate. So I'm having to go through and making sure that. Is Dave Matthews Band really eligible this year, or should they be eligible next year, and all that other stuff? Yeah, and I, I know. Um, I know so. what. I, yeah, I'm pretty sure I know which site you're you're, you're speaking of, and I'll, I'll I'll shut them out right here. Uh, Future Rock Legends, right? Yeah, it's Future Rock Legends. Yeah, and they have a ridiculous list that when I first really started caring about this ten years ago, uh, I basically took their entire list put it into a spreadsheet and i think i've sh- shared my spreadsheet with you at some point mm-hmm. we got 2800 bands in there yeah at this point um and and a lot of it was originally based off of that but some of the data i have in there was originally put in there in 2007 um and it may not be fully accurate for what we need so i actually have to go back through and make sure that they actually should be eligible this year as opposed to next year and everything mm-hmm. like that. Cause there are a few from last year who I, they had eligible. That I don't think were. And they're doing the best they can too. Cause it's not like the, the rock and rock and roll hall of fame is transparent with that either. <laughs> the rock and roll hall of fame isn't the only thing transparent is the outside of the building. <laughs> like, <laughs> everything else is a complete and utter murky mess. Right. Um, but yeah. The one thing I will say, though, and we, we talked about this back in January, whenever we talked about this, after they did the last rock hall, I'm calling it again, uh, that the, the put it in, bet on it in Vegas, Motley Crue is getting into the rock hall. They are leading the vote mm-hmm. by far at the Hall of Fame, where you can actually vote for who you want to get in. Motley Crue is number one on that list by far at this point, and they care a lot about stuff like this now. Yeah, so, yeah, I'm glad you um, added that word now. <laughs> they, now they do, yeah. They, they they didn't before, but they do now, which is why um, Stevie Nicks 
who was third on that list last year, got as much consideration as she did, I think, versus some of the other female artists out there, um, and become became the first female member of the Clyde Fatter Club uh, because of that. That how mm-hmm. well she's doing in that. But it's still interesting. They have one of the top ten is still Freddie Mercury as a solo artist. Oh, that's ridiculous. I, I I can't name it, and also Blink One Eighty Two is like fourth, but um, I, I I can't really name you any significant reason why he, Freddie Mercury should be ending on his own uh, recent popular movie. Be damned. Well, so. e- even in that movie, if if you saw that, they kind of take a shot at his solo career. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, there are a whole bunch of people. I mean, I know they got all the Beatles in now, uh, and Ugh. three of them deserve it for their solo career, and and uh, Ringo was still the drummer. <laughs> I managed to get him in. <laughs> that old joke about the Beatles. Uh, yeah. That, uh, that uh, McCartney was the heart of the band, Lennon was the brains of the band, uh, Harrison was the soul of, band, of the band, and Ringo was a drummer. Yep. Um, but, like, there's... There are a lot of other people whose solo careers should probably be up there before Freddie Mercury's, and uh, and, and I, I I'd like to hope they're going to ignore that, but who knows? The only other so, I am... well, well, yeah, I was going to say the only other like worst solo person on a major band to put ahead of Mercury, and I wouldn't, and I would put him ahead of him, but then again, neither of them should even be there. Mick Jagger. Mick Jagger. I knew you were going to say Mick Jagger. I didn't want to interrupt you. Yeah. I knew you were going to say Jagger. Yeah. Yeah, because, I mean, Mick Jagger's solo career is definitely superior, in my opinion, to to uh, to Freddie Mercury's. But there, there are some other folks out there who are in bands, like Phil Collins, for example, who uh, probably might have a little bit of a better claim. So. You know, it, anyway. Yeah, going on that, you know, it keeps, like, rocketing up uh, the rankings on, on, on our, our rock list. It's uh, Joe Walsh. Yeah, that's an interesting one. I love Joe Walsh. I um, do too. I don't know yeah, that yeah. I would put him in as a solo. But... Yeah. Yeah, Life's Been Good to Me So Far is still one of my favorite songs when it comes on the, the, the classic rock station. So... It's uh, one of my favorites. But anyway, all right, we we'll go to bed, man. We're, <laughs> we're, we're way beyond, but but just just know my uh, my top four list is coming to you shortly because they they're going to make that announcement. It's usually the second week in October, right? It usually is. Uh, I, I I gotta say, like living out here where the weather is always the same. Sometimes I wake up in the morning and I gotta think, what month is this? Because <laughs> I don't always. I've literally had to think about that a couple times. Oh, that's right. I, when yeah, I, then, I, then I think about what I watched in sports the night before. So, sometimes you tell, tell the month by the bottle that you drink. <laughs> they, they, they they don't last uh, too long here. I'll say that. Oh, but if they're only eight ounces, no kidding. Yeah. So <laughs> that's true. <laughs> and, and it, <laughs> anyway, man, um, good to talk to you. We agree that the Hockey Hall of Fame was kind of a disaster this year. And we look forward to Jerome McGinley and company getting in next year, right? I'm sure it'll be a better supporting crew. Yeah. Because it, so, it can't yeah, be worse. Be cool. I, 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 I'd like, I mean, I, I'm still going to stump for Turgeon, but I... Uh, I like I like the idea of, I mean, if, it's, if it ended up being McGinley, Alfredson, and Roenick... Uh, then that'd be, I'd be more than satisfied with that. You It'd know? be a great class. It would be a fantastic class. Yeah. So, anyway, dude, it's good talk to you. Expect a thing coming up. And uh, All right, well, and we'll do this again in a few weeks. Hey, take care, man. All right, take care. Bye. All right, bye.